is Richard Barrett for Guitarist Magazine, and I'm here to show you the PRS DGTSE. Now let's unpick that name for a moment. PRS obviously is the brand. DG is David Grissom, and T is for tremolo. I know a lot of people say vibrato, but they're calling it T, so that doesn't stand for vibrato. Um, and then we have the SE suffix, which tells us that this is the version of the guitar made in Indonesia. So it comes out at a lower price point than the US model, which I have lying in the case behind me. In fact, it comes in at roughly a quarter of the price. Though, as we shall see, there are probably more similarities than there are differences. Just to talk through a couple of the most obvious ones, we have a slightly flatter top on this with non-recessed controls. And the US model has much more of an arch top and a recess around each of the three controls. Another one, if I flip the guitar over briefly, is that we have the same electronics, basically, uh, the same arrangement of electronics anyway, but the plates on the uh, back of the vibrato and the inspection plate for those isn't recessed. Right, now rewinding from that detail for a moment and going back onto the more basic fundamentals, we have mahogany neck, mahogany body, a maple top, and in this case, a flame maple laminate. At the headstock, the hardware there is six non-locking Gota style PRS branded tuners. I've made a point of saying non-locking because as you're probably aware if you know PRS guitars they usually have the locking tuners. Well this has a more standard arrangement though with the almost straight string pull and graphite nut I'm not really having any problems keeping this guitar in tune at all. Okay now we have a rosewood fretboard with medium jumbo frets and the bird inlays. As you would expect from a PRS the quality is very very high indeed. Can't find a fault with any of that. Electronically, we have, as I said earlier, an identical arrangement, though the components themselves, and in that I'm including the pickups, the pots themselves, which are alpha pots, and the capacitors. We have treble bleeds on the neck and bridge pickup, for instance. These are identical value components, but they're more locally sourced. So if you want chapter and verse on exactly what values are in there, then I would advise having a look in Guitarist issue 495, where it's gone into in detail. Um, Three-way selector down here. Plug-in tensionable arm. Now, this unit differs ever so slightly from the US version because it's cast, but it's come out of the box perfectly set up and it's working well. I guess we should have a listen to some sounds and that will encapsulate me demonstrating the treble bleed and there is actually a partial coil split too, which I'll go into. I'm plugged into the Studio Vox AC15 and the way I have that set is so that if I hit a chord with the full humbucker sound on, then you will hear the breakup. But as I bring the volume down with the treble bleed, you'll really hear that kicking in. So let's have a listen to the bridge pickup. Now I'm going to roll the volume back as I hit the chord. So what you'll hear there is the gain obviously lowers, we lose a bit of low end, but we keep quite a lot of the high end. So the net result is a much brighter, more Telecaster type sound that is really useful for playing clean passages and then using the guitar for a dynamic, which is very much the way that David Grissom does like to use his guitars. So this is a great guitar for that old school approach of a distorted amp and controlling it from the guitar. Now, on the master tone, I've just pulled that up and that is a partial coil split. Essentially, the difference between that and a regular coil split or coil tap, whatever you want to call it, is that it retains a little bit more, <clears throat> excuse me, of the other coil. So the predominant coil here is the inner coil, as it is with the neck pickup too. But we're keeping a little bit of that to keep the volume more consistent. 
one problem with these coil splits has been that you'll have the full fat sound and then the thinner single coil type sound is so much quieter that it makes it borderline unusable in some cases. Now, as you can hear, there's virtually no volume drop. Though with that inner coil taking the lion's share of the work, you are hearing a more Telecaster again type of sound. Same thing happens with the neck pickup. It's slightly less apparent. The neck pickup is a slightly lower powered unit. The bridge is probably medium to hot path and the neck is more of a standard path output. Though PRS are a little bit secretive about the exact figures on that, so I'm afraid I can't give them to you. Right, let's hear the treble bleed. On this neck pickup. So you hear that tapers fairly quickly. By the time I get the guitar down to about halfway on the control, it's virtually clean. So to sum up, again, some of the differences between this SE version and the US made core version, we have slightly flatter top without the recess around the controls. Also, the back plates aren't recessed, which is not an issue for me. I didn't mention earlier that the neck, which is slim but rounded. It's a really nice neck actually. You can feel the edges slightly more, they're not as rounded, though I hasten to point out that that isn't an issue in any way. It's just slightly different and I'm guessing slightly less expensive to produce. This comes out at 979 in a gig bag and I've made a track which I hope will demonstrate the way that you can use the volume control on the guitar to really manipulate a great range of sounds. Um, and I've used my Boss Super Overdrive to give the amp a bit of an extra push to do that. So I hope you enjoy it.